Today we're going to use trigonometry to solve triangles that are not right triangles. So there are ways when you don't have a right triangle to solve for an unknown side or an unknown angle. The first method that you're going to learn is the law of cosines. Let's start by first looking at this triangle right here. In a triangle, we use capital letters to note the angles, and the sides opposite that um, is a lowercase letter representing the side opposite angle A. So capital letter for angle B, and then lowercase letter to represent the side opposite angle B. And then opposite angle C, lowercase, is the side opposite um, angle C. So the law of cosine says at the top of the uh, table, we can use it in solving triangles where the measure of two sides and the included angle are known. So this is SAS. Or where the lengths of all three sides are known, this is SSS. So when I end up finding um, a missing side or need to find an angle, if you take a look, we are given, now in these three examples, okay, they're different depending on which angle you're looking at. So if I'm looking at angle A, on the left side of the equal sign is going to be the side opposite, which is the lowercase a. So opposite angle A is lowercase a. If I'm looking at angle B, opposite B on the left side of the equal sign is going to be the lowercase b. And then opposite C, so if, if I'm looking at angle C, is the lowercase letter c. Okay? So in that formula, that's what it means when it has the capital versus lowercase. But if you take a look at each one, we're given side 1, 2, and 3. So we have all three sides, and we're looking at an angle. 1, 2, 3 sides, and an angle. 1, 2, 3 sides, and an angle. So in order to use law of cosines, you need three sides and one angle. Okay? And I'll talk more about what these actually mean in the given problem in number one. So in number one, we have to find the side or length of A. That's side CB, and that's opposite 78. So law of cosine says the sign that's opposite the given angle squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two lengths that are not opposite. So 17 squared plus 23 squared minus 2 times the product of those two sides times the cosine of the angle that was opposite the side you're looking for. So the cosine of 78. You want to show some partial credit. So the sum of the squares of 17 and 23 is 818 minus the product 782 times the cosine of 78 degrees. So I have a squared equal to that difference. To solve for a, we take the square root. And again, you have a quadratic, so you have two solutions. So we're going to have a positive and negative solution, and it's going to be equal to the square root of that expression. When you type the expression in the calculator, you get 655.4130578. We're going to reject the negative root, as it represents the length of a side, and A is approximately 25.6. Number two, what is the measure of angle C? So once again, we have one angle and all three sides marked. So this is the law of cosines. And law of cosines says the side opposite the angle that's given or that you're trying to find squared is equal to the sum of the squares of your other two legs 
minus 2 times the product of those sides times the cosine of the angle that's opposite. Again, here's the matching pair. So opposite the 18 is the cosine of C. 18 squared is 324. 11 squared plus 13 squared is 290 minus 2 times 11 times 13 is 286 cosine of C. Now I want to solve for the cosine of C because to find the angle measure we're going to do the inverse cosine. So to isolate the cosine of C we need to subtract the 290 from both sides first and we get 34 is equal to negative 286 cosine C. Divide by negative 286 and here's my ratio that cancels. So that's equal to the cosine of C. Now the measure of angle C is equal to the inverse cosine of 34 over negative 286, which equals 96.827.53318. We're rounding to the nearest tenth, so the measure of angle C is approximately 96.8 degrees. On the next page with the law of sines, now it says we can use the law of sines if we're given two angle measures and any side length. So that could be angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. Two side lengths and a non-included angle measure, that's SSA. And remember, this we're not talking about, this is not triangle congruency. We can't prove two triangles congruent by SSA, but these are just um, abbreviations for what you need in order to use the law of sines. And then, either way you set it up, this way or this way is okay, I'm just, I'm just going to give you this formula on your test as I give you all of these um, laws that you're learning today. So, if you look, in order to use law of sines, again, you're only going to be given an equation where you have something like this, which you have two sides and then two angles. So this is what we need. Once again, A is opposite angle A, B is opposite angle B. So I have this triangle here, I'm trying to find DF, let's call that X. So law of sine says the side length, so let's look at 18 over the sine of the angle that's opposite, so that'd be the sine of 105 degrees, equals the other side length DF, which is X, and opposite DF is 32 degrees, so that's over the sine of 32. We can solve a proportion by cross multiplying. So it's 18 sine of 32 degrees equals X times the sine of 105 degrees. Divide by the sine of 105. Those cancel, and we get X equal to 9.87503.0252. To the nearest tenth, DF is approximately 9.9. .9. So in the one on the left, we had to find the measure of a side. The one on the right, we're going to find the measure of angle S. So opposite angle S is 5. So it's 5 over the sine of S equals 7, opposite 7 is the sine of 105 degrees. Find our cross products, 5 sine of 105 degrees equals 7 times the sine of S. So I need to get the ratio, so sine of S is equal to 5 times the sine of 105 over 7. So to find the measure of angle S, we do the inverse sine of 5 times the sine 
of 105. I don't know why I'm writing 105. That's 75 everywhere. We had the 105 from the last question. Change that all to 75. Five sine s, seven sine seventy-five. So five times the sine of seventy-five divide. So it's five times the sine of seventy-five all over seven. So I do the inverse of that, and we get forty-three point six two five nine one five zero nine. Rounding to the nearest degree, the measure of angle s is approximately 44 degrees. Number five, and then we'll take a look at the area. We have to draw our triangle, RST. R, side R, so that's opposite angle R, is 24. Angle R is 30. And the measure of angle T is 45 degrees. Find the exact uh, length of RS. So two sides, two angles, that's law of sines. So it's going to be 24 over the sine of 30 degrees equals X over the sine of 45 degrees. Now when you do it on your calculator, the sine of 30 is one half. The sine of 45 though is irrational. So if you take a look at a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And you can make up any relationship between your sides. So say 7, 7, 7 radical 2. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So 7 over 7 radical 2, the 7's always cancel. You get 1 over radical 2. But we can't leave our answer with an irrational denominator, so we have to rationalize. And we get radical 2 over 2. So this is divided by radical 2 over 2. Now we can do our cross product. So 1 half times x, I'm going to write it up here, is 1 half x. And then 24 equals 24 times radical 2 over 2. We can do some cross canceling. Uh, 2 goes into 24 12 times. So 1 half x equals 12 radical 2. Well, half of what equals 12 radical 2? You can already see, you already have in your head, it's going to be half of 24 radical 2. But to get rid of the half, we just multiply by 2. So multiply this side by 2, and we get 24 radical 2. So RS is equal to 24 radical 2. That's the exact length. Again, we're not too round. Last, we're going to finish with area for, uh, using trigonometry to find the area of a triangle. We know the area of a triangle, the formula, is 1 half base times height. The area of this triangle, with a base of C and a height of H, is 1 half C times H. Now, in using trig, I know we, can, we already have the altitude and we already have the base, but we can use trig in triangles where we're not given the altitude um, to the base to find the area. But we're first, so in using trig, let's look at how we can represent the height. So let's look at the sine of angle A and the sine of angle B, which is the two halves of that triangle when you draw the altitude. So sine of A equals H over B, and the sine of B equals H over A. If I solve both of them for H, so I'd have to multiply by B to cancel it, multiply by B, H is equal to B sine of A. Over here, multiply by A, multiply by A, H is equal to A sine of B. Now if I substitute back in this equation where the H is, we have the area equal to 1 half C, and then replacing the H with B sine A. Over here, replacing the H, it would be area of the triangle, 1 half C times A sine B.
in this picture, if I'm looking at angle A, these two sides, B and C, are the two sides where angle A is included between. And the same goes for the other side. So to find the area of a triangle using trig, that's equal to one half the product of the lengths of the two sides and the sine of the angle between them. So this would be side, angle, side. So if I look at the product, let, let's pick sides A and C. So it'd be one half, I'm gonna multiply A and C. It's times the sine of the angle between them. So it'd be times the sine of B. If I pick the two sides A and B, so one half AB, that would be times the sine of C, because C is included between those two sides. If I look at the two remaining sides, which would be, I got A, B, A, C, so B and C, A is the angle between, so one half B, C, sine of A. So to find the area, we need two sides in the angle included between them, which is this. Here's two sides, the angle included between them is C. So area is one half the product of those two sides times the sine of the angle between them, 64. Well, half of 14 is seven, and seven times nine is 63. So 63 sine of 64 degrees is 56.624. 0.24492. Rounding to the nearest tenth, the area is approximately 56.6 square units.